Greg Cock here for Wildwood Guitars. Here with Doug Sewell from Paul Reed Smith, Amplification Devices of Glory and Destruction. Howdy. How you doing? I'm doing good. You Later know, it's been California. a while since we were ensconced in a secret mountainous hideaway where we were treating your amplifiers like farm animals. I'm telling you what. That felt good. Yeah. Not that there's anything was, wrong with that. <laughs> it's, <laughs> haven't done that since, though. Well, you got to kind of space things out but or I else there's an it, issue. I realize it was a mountainous hideaway. Indeed. So yeah. you've got some new creatures we out a, this year at the... We have a, here we are at the NAMM show. At the NAMM show, we have a couple of new creatures. Yeah, we're, uh, we have uh, got an enhanced version of our two-channel amp going. Mm -hmm. It is uh, a compilation of a lot of features that people have been asking for over the past three years with it. So we thought we would just try to flex our design muscles. Yes. And try to answer a lot of uh, these questions and with the one, queries, with if one you will, in, the queries. And which one is that now? That would be the two channel custom. The two channel custom, which custom we heard. fifty and one hundred. Which sounds yeah. robust. It well, thank you very much. Indeed, and I also enjoyed the MDT with the, the MDT with kind the, of one with channel the boost thing. That's, that's the other one. Paul and I have been. Uh, uh, man, that particular model goes back to my first first days of Sewell amps, mm. actually. But it's, it's the latest and greatest. We have um, found secret ways to transform that amp from a clean machine to, to a, a device of reckoning. To a, to a device of reckoning. Yep. That's scientific talk. That's scientific, yeah. Now, I also saw uh, an HXDA new co little combo with 212s. Yeah, that's a, that's a cool little amp. Um, I used to do this little trick with uh, Sewell amps where I'd do a 50 watt and a 25 watt version. Mm -hmm. And it was basically doing the same thing as variacking down the electricity. Got it. Going into the amp. And that's scientific. Indeed. But um, it is, uh, it's the same amp that has been scaled down to a 30 watt okay. via uh, lower plate voltages. And adjustments, so it will uh, it will do the it will do the same as the HXDA, same power tube, same everything, uh, but it will do it uh, at a lower volume, which is good. Which is good for a lot of people because I a lot understand. of times, as much as you would like to deploy the powers of Mordor on right. the universe, right. sometimes you got to be reeled in by the power of the environment that you're in. That's correct. Because mm -hmm. yeah. I like that. Play well with others. Indeed, I've been using my HXDA in the recording format and so on and so forth. I find it to be a, a robust sounding tone console. I, uh... Beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. Yes, that just happened. That's how things, that, anything can happen here. <laughs> You can't Nam pay show. enough for that kind of for that kind of stuff. That's that beautiful. Here we are now. Never know what's around the corner. Plastic trombones and mariachi band. Caramba! Uh, here you go. Me amo Gregorio. <laughs> Donde esta el baño? That's the extent of my knowledge of Spanish. Well, then again, my teacher in college, her name was Senora Knowlton. So there's really no small wonder that the authenticity of my Spanish experience is somewhat lacking. <laughs> but be that as it may. Now, right. another amplifier at... Wildwood that I played yeah. recently, yeah. and I, my nostrils began to flare with almost an uncontrolled vehemence. Was uh, I believe a 410 Dallas? That is correct. It was like a super reverb Zilla, but it had the ability to get a little bit of preamp thing going, which I usually don't like. But in this amp, it worked fantastic. I would put it on, right. roll back the volume on the guitar, clean, <laughs> turn it up, and just a robust <laughs> sounding tone. Well, the uh, with yeah, a little bit of reverb were, too on there. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, you know, it'll, or a lot. If yeah. You want. Uh, but that that particular amp is the whole thing about those types of circuits is, uh, and it's boy, it is a fine tuning situation. Is the low end. Right. You can go just over the precipice a little bit, and it will turn muddy. You can go just the precipice underneath it, and it will be thin. Right. So it is a fine-tuned situation that's something that we worked on a long time with a lot of different ears and a lot of different artists and a lot of different speakers, you know, those kinds of situations. This is a purpose-built chassis for 410s, and it um, will deliver that nice, tight, but yet full low right. end. And that's, that's what makes all the, uh, all the difference with those. 
It sounds so, awesome. I well, dug it. I dug it a lot. You know why? Because I like music. I like amps. I like guitars. I like mariachi bands. I think it's lovely. It's lovely. It reminds me of Texas. Texas. There you go. It's nice to be here in Southern California yeah, this particular Texas juncture in time because it's nice and warm here. Back home, right. it's like six below zero right now. We, we was 13 when I left Baltimore. What are you going to do? I don't know. You're going to stay warm out here. That's right. And try to kind of undervalue that experience to your wife when you talk to her on the phone. Which Absolutely. Looks, I, which she's I, not filled with a palpable sense of hate. You, you've got it figured out. You have some years of experience. Indeed I do, yeah. my friend. Indeed yeah. I do. Well, a pleasure talking to you talking as to usual. You, Keep up the good work. You're my favorite tall guy. Well, I appreciate that kind of talk. Rick <laughs> Rock here for Wildwood at the NAMM Show at 13. Later. Mm -hmm.